I'll get out in a second and help you guys push, but. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's a little running. This is how you really learn a reservoir. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like promising, but kind of disheartening at the same time. This wind is kind of taking its toll. Smart! I've seen that before. <laughs> While you wouldn't be able to tell at this time of year, I'm in the Sunflower State, Kansas. I'm Ryan Callahan, and I'm joined here by Weatherby's own Tyler Gretton for a few days of mid-season waterfowl in the geographical center of the U.S. Along with Snort, we're in a totally new-to-us location. We can find boat ramps and water using OnX, but we still need to find the birds. Mixed bag back De here. Definitely a mixed bag back here. What's really appealing about this is the cover comes right down to the water. Yeah, we could definitely so it, hide in here. So it's a good blind scenario. There's so much water here and so few birds. Yeah, we should probably keep. Yeah, we'll just cruise back options, to, the, yeah. to the boat ramp and see if we can find another hole. Move on to the next one. Yeah. While most people think of grassland when they think of Kansas, there's a significant number of large, publicly accessible bodies of water spread throughout the state, which can make scouting here even more challenging. Okay, we're about three quarters of the way around this lake and don't really have much to show for it. It's just like when you go to a new piece of ground, you just, you have to kind of go check off where not to hunt too. So I feel like that's what we're doing. We're eventually gonna get into a pocket of birds, right? So that's the theory is you just keep yeah. checking. As much as you're looking for something, you're looking where they're not at. There's only one answer to scouting waterfowl is just keep going. Just gotta keep going, yeah. Just burn more gas. We settle on a calm bay best described as a decent plan B. We'll have the wind and sun at our backs. That and a good hide is about all we can do. A couple of tips. One, always brush more than you think you need to. Just keep cutting, that's like one row. Two, use local vegetation, preferably without stripping the area around your blind. And three, connect the blind with the surrounding landscape using large branches that break up your silhouette. But like, with all this red stuff behind us, that's... I think it's gonna look pretty good be pretty good. Yeah. So Cal's going back to get some more gear. We're going to set up the blind. We're kind of set up on this point. The wind is going this way, so we're going to set up kind of in this tree spot here. And that should give these birds anything coming up the main channel. We should have good visibility and they should pitch right down in here. So we're going to kind of stack decoys here, a few over here, and then put the motion decoys in the middle. Twenty minutes still legal shooting. And we got decoys in the water, so we're ahead yeah. of the game. Perfect. Well, I'm going to putter the boat back further in this bay and then uh, come down and help you. Throughout the finish everything. Yeah. We'll be set, huh? yeah, that's it. Been a little bit slow this morning. Makes guy nervous when there's not a couple of birds that come in in the dark, but it does make you nervous. You kind of just got to do all the things and then help the ducks cooperate. Yeah. Most good duck hunts start with a flurry of birds in the decoys at or before shooting light. Since that didn't happen, we spend some time moving the spread, repositioning the spinners and floaters to more visible locations. And just like pouring a cup of coffee or unwrapping a sandwich, this seems to bring the birds in. <coughs> Might be getting 
getting serious here. Far. Got it done now. Might be a slow duck day, but you, at least you made a little girl very happy. Yeah, that's what I was excited for snort there. She's been itching at it. That's a beautiful bird. First shot too, that was great. Yeah, I'm like, don't get away, so. He landed a long way away, but he was belly up. It'd be good to find a couple more. Yes. But we did not get skunked. As sweet as it is watching a dog make a long retrieve, there are many instances where you should not let your dog be a hero. Waves, strong current, ice flows are a few of the dangers. Cover your ears, Snort. Snort! Add a wounded duck and a strong prey drive, and you could have a bad day, or worse. Sometimes, it's better to use the boat. Seems like it might have got to push a bird's last, or just honestly this morning, because there wasn't anything flying around this like early morning. No. And then now it's just out of the clouds, dro mallards are dropping in. Right. So. We definitely know after today, if you're not where the birds want to land, you're going to get two birds. Yeah. We, we you know, the birds that we got today, we, we got. There, we didn't get very many looks where we were not capitalizing. No, no nothing yeah. was coming through just to check us out. We're just, we're so limited on what we can hunt public land wise. And the birds don't seem to really want to be on the, the big stuff that we can hunt. Yeah, they want to be in kind of those shallow water places where we can't get to. Yeah. We're here, we can go, I think we can get on that point or we can come down here. That probably doesn't give a good advantage. Otherwise, we're going all the way down to this point here. Despite a liberal fuel budget, the scouting officially sucks worse than the hunting. Did I mention we haven't even seen another group of hunters? Once again, it's a good looking spot. Not much for birds though. So we commit to waking up earlier and adjusting to run traffic instead of being on the X, which wasn't. on no sleep and a new plan, reality comes and kicks us square in the mud. And then the hits keep coming. Oh yeah. This looks no bueno up here. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen that before. Okay. Quick connect no good if you don't have anything to quick connect to. Tyler. <laughs> We're back back in the game now. I 
And listen, don't be, uh, don't be afraid to uh, shoot some ducks. Okay. Even with these delays, there's absolutely no need to panic. Remember the birds didn't fly until mid-morning, so we have time. Well, I mean, not for this group. Oh wow, they're still gonna do it. A hundred times more action yes. today than yesterday. That will get you. Man, that first group was probably 40 minutes. Wanted, wanted in when we were setting up, but. Let's see if they come back. Look at Snort. Just... Come on, little girl. <laughs> Now that we have our one duck after five and a half hours of effort, allow me to recap the morning for you. Not knowing exactly where you're gonna hunt is always a gamble. An ice slash mud flow, more ice and mud than water, and then running out of gas, that was good. Not having a quick connect connection, spilling a third of it. Being real late, thumbs up our butts, crappy blind. Is that about covered, Tyler? I, th I think you got a lot of check marks there of how the morning went. Dog's so. doing great. Dog did great, got one retrieve, so. The mallard that did land, landed about 10 yards away. So yeah, we landed that was pretty cool. Decoys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for the optimism. So there's some positivity oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Despite my attitude, the forecast is calling for increasing winds. And with the wind comes the ducks. Or nice when they center up like like that though. Big old triple tail on them. Oh yeah. Look at that one, two, three. Like that. Gosh, those green heads are so pretty this time of year. Conditions have changed dramatically here on the point. Look at that point there. Uh, wow. Yeah, I've never seen a dust storm start in the middle of a lake. In the middle of a lake on a ice covered mud flat. If this keeps up, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to keep this blind here with the way of action anyway. Yeah, we're getting, uh, our setup's taking a, taking a little bit of a toll here with the wind. What do we got, four ducks? We got four ducks, we got four mallards, so. Yeah, the uh, Had a couple missed opportunities there. Yeah, our bag right now doesn't really reflect a lot more how action. many birds yeah. have been here. We've gotten a lot more looks than we did yesterday. Yeah. So. Yeah. Huh. Wow. It's like a Winslow Homer painting out here. <laughs> and that's something to be proud of, Kansas. <laughs> Better kill him. Good dog. Hit him, hit him, hit him. Now the wind is our friend in this spot, but the consequence is it's easy for a live or dying duck to gain 100 feet in elevation just by cupping their wings. They are in range, then out, in a blink of an eye. We uh, got another bird down. The guys are out there just r picking it up. It got a little bit far out, but he, he's definitely dead. Go get two more. Yeah, I think we're he's sticking it out. We got one, one mallard apiece left. 
pretty wild to get a group that big this late in the day, in my experience. Right? Yeah, it's like, usually it's tough on those big groups. Usually it's like you want them coming in fours and fives, but that was a good group there. And it's not, uh, it's not like it's uh, the first couple weeks of the season, right? Yeah. Like these birds have been shot at for a long time, so. Uh, I'd like to believe it's that we're really good duck hunters, but you know, the conditions I think <laughs> yeah. are, are helping all of a sudden. Setting up on the exposed point with goose decoys, spinners, and obnoxious calling is what it takes to draw the birds from the safety of the lake and into range. We get loud on the calls when the birds are over the big water and taper back as they close in. These mid-morning birds continue to provide opportunities. Uh, so we started picking up and do a little scout on our way out of here and uh, come up with a plan for tomorrow. I think we need to just hit the road um, like we did last night and just keep checking other spots. And if not, then we'll, we'll come right back here. So, Burn that gas, find those so birds. Killing four mallards a piece, that's nothing to hang your head about. No, it's so, great. I'm pumped about that. It's great and tight shots, man. Tight shots. They decoyed. Dog got some work. Yeah, Snort is happy. She got her fill, at least. She can't be too mad at us. Got some plucking and some eating and some scouting to do. So let's do it. Covering some mileage here. Big too. time. So. Big time. We came all the way from Montana and Wyoming. And <laughs> Wyoming. And this is what you got, Kansas? It makes me want to go back and hunt the same spot. I'm, I'm thinking that's our best option. I mean, it's like last day. Might as well give it a try. Yeah. yeah. Get there, be a little bit more pro in the morning yeah if we can if we can do how we did day one and get to our spot and yeah and like we, be actually set up and ready to set roll. up ready to rock at shooting right it's just such a timing thing right now and it's like we we just hit the donut hole right we're like in between the birds but we got to make it work I'm, I'm thinking tomorrow probably same spot run traffic like we've been doing yeah they're not our birds they're everybody's birds we just got to work to make them give us a look yeah. It's wash, rinse, repeat. We make our spread extra visible with goose floaters and make our blind blend in extra well. All right, man, we did it. Got here early, got up early, got out the door early, got all the stuff over here early. Really improved our hide situation. Sweet decoy spread. Just add ducks. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. Heck yeah. Those those geese didn't really want to be here, but they really didn't want to be in that wind. They did not. Yeah. Good girl. I gotta help this little dog out. Thank oh you. man, what a surprise that is. Love that. Come on, little girl. Oh, look at her working. Come on, little girl. Woo. one in the decoy. Shoot that one. Snort! Maybe that group we should have waited on. Yeah. It's hard when there's one in the decoys and we've had it happen, you know, a couple times where they're in the decoys and then the others just skirt off. These are beautiful birds. Yeah, they're that's a pretty too. bird. Wow. Look at that thing. Oh, wow. That's 
is awesome. Good girl. Yeah, man, I gotta say, I am uh, I'm pretty proud, pretty proud of ourselves. I never once had the feeling of like, oh my gosh, we're gonna knock them dead today. Yeah. You know? It's been one of those ones where you had to put the work into it and honestly just try to find the best spot that we could. And, and yeah, I'm pretty, pretty pumped that we, we did this. This was good. Well, I mean, this is a yeah. lot of meat. Yeah, look at that. And we had opportunities at more every day. So, you know, it's like, we're not sitting on limits, but we came close every day. Yeah, and we were just chipping away at them. And, and we had the opportunities for limits every day. Yeah, and getting, uh, getting birds to decoy like that on public land is pretty gnarly this time of year. Oh, so. we're deep into the season. We're in a part of the flyway where these birds have probably been shot at in a couple of states prior to this one. All over but the plucking and the cooking. Yeah, plucking and cooking. We got some work to do after this. This week was a lesson in shifting tactics to make great duck days out of poor duck options. I'm reminded of the great waterfowl writer Gordon McQuarrie here when he says, it's no use to live it up all at once. <laughs>